Hi, good evening, my dear students. This is Hassan Basani. How are you guys doing today? Uh, uh, my apologies for delay of 10 minutes. We were facing some technical issues. Um, uh, my screen, uh, we were not able to share my screen. So I hope now that you guys are able to see my screen and you are able to hear me clearly. Can you please confirm yes in the chat box or comment box? Excellent, excellent. So today is day two and uh, we've got an uh, agenda for day two, but before we start with day two, I would like to quickly um, you know, uh, finish the remaining portion of day one which was the most important topic, suitability, feasibility, acceptability. OK. So. Um, let me uh, right away go to the topic of suitability, acceptability uh, framework. Can you see the screen of SFA? OK, right, so. Just as a recap, a SFA framework is used whenever we are thinking of acquiring a new company, either in the same country or in outside our country. OK, suitability factors look at external factors and you have to draft three paragraphs under suitability. The first paragraph will talk about the challenges of home country. Uh, the second paragraph will talk about the pros and cons of the target country. And the third paragraph will talk about the information about target company. After that, we will move to feasibility. And the first paragraph will talk about human resource then financial resource, then IT, and then brand. And uh, acceptability will talk about, uh, you know, is the proposed strategy acceptable to the shareholders? And we will focus more on financials. Okay. Uh, I think the the screen is stuck. If you just give me one minute, I need to you know get comfortable with the screen. Give me a second. Right, guys, uh, I think uh, we have fixed the problem of screen sharing. Uh, let me just check whether the screen is changing. Now we are at financial projections. Perfect. All right, so let's go back. Acceptability, we talk about shareholders acceptance and we will look at the financial projections of the proposed acquisition, right? When we look at financial projections, I gave you a checklist of four items. First of all, we will see whether the projections are based on discounted cash flow. After that, we will go through whatever assumptions are mentioned in the exhibit and uh, you know, try to look for any apparent uh, mistakes. Then we will quickly calculate the payback period. And Lastly, we will just mention one line that a sensitivity analysis needs to be done. OK. Right, so with this, let's quickly um, hit the. 
question. Let me look for the question. Yeah. So just to recap, we were doing December 2018 highlight and uh, there was the introduction in which I had done some referencing, remember? So the economy was doing good. I'm just going through my notes on the left hand side. See how useful this referencing is. The economy is doing good. The industry is doing good. Our pricing strategy is very good. Location is our advantage. We are market leaders. However, there is fierce competition and we have invested heavily in technology and you know we value our staff uh, our role as senior business analyst and then there was this list of six exhibits and then we did question number one a yesterday and now let's look at one b okay the board of highlight has identified an existing chain of hotels called called Comfy, Comfy Stay, located in Villandia, which it is considering acquiring. The chief business analyst <clears throat> has passed you a fact sheet which he prepared containing data relating to the proposed acquisition required. Using the fact sheet referred to above and any other relevant information, prepare a report for the finance director which evaluates the proposal to acquire the comfy stay hotel chain 16 marks professional skills marks are available for demonstrating evaluation skills in presenting a balanced and objective appraisal of the relevant information relating to the proposed acquisition of the comfy stay hotel chain four marks <clears throat> total this part uh, b is 16 plus 4 20 marks right so uh, since uh, part 1b talks about proposal to acquire we straight away know that this topic we have to use SAF model or SFA model and for evaluation skills what do we need to keep in mind do you remember if we want to score good on evaluation skill what do we need to do excellent altaf pros and cons right so we make sure that in our analysis in our draft we cover both plus points and minus points okay so that we present a balanced uh, view of the proposed strategy good so now we need to look for information about home country uh, more importantly the issues the challenges why we are actually thinking of you know expanding internationally then we need to look for information about target country which is Vilandia in this case and then we need to look for target company information which is comfy stay hotel okay so let's move on to the exhibits so we read exhibit one yesterday and again I will just quickly go through the referencing done on the left hand side in red so in summary we've got good brand we've got good staffing we've got good location and some financials were given about our number of employees uh, total sales profit growth strong cash flows and then we invested heavily in digital and technology and then uh, something about competitors dynamics are changing cost structures under pressure some KPIs and focus for the future. So there are four strategic, you see this four key strategic themes for our future. Digital, international growth, 
focus on staffing and focus on environment okay right so now let's move to exhibit two which is the land hotel industry report again it talks more about the industry of our home country which is the land and if you look at the referencing then it talks about industry is booming government is supporting economy is doing good government points you know uh staff talk somewhere thing about staff turnovers fine did you see any information on vilandia or comfy hotel as yet can you guys hear me and um just checking did you guys see any information about about vilandia which is our target country and about comfy stay hotel which is our target company no correct absolutely correct so so far the introduction exhibit one exhibit two they all talked about our home country which is d land and about us which is highlight let's move to exhibit three Exhibit three is a fact sheet relating to highlights proposed acquisition target prepared by chief business analyst. So from the name of the exhibit, I am guessing that this might be an important exhibit for this particular requirement. So it tells me about comfy stay hotel key business industry data. Comfy Stay is a family run business which has lacked investment in last 10 years. Interesting. All 20 hotels in the chain have been in operation for over 18 years and are located in main coastal resorts of Villandia. These are in premium locations but with outdated facilities. So, you know, they've got 20 hotels and they are operating for last 18 years. If if I can recall how many hotels we got, I think 510 hotels and we have been in business for 40 years. That's my as per my memory. What else? It's a mid range hotel. Some with additional leisure facilities as gyms and pools, not classed as budget hotels. So it's a mid range hotel, not classed as budget hotels. Whereas our business model is uh, strongly based on budget hotels. Remember, our key success factor was our pricing strategy. We are a budget hotel, but these guys are mid range hotels. Now, Vilandia is 5,000 miles from D land. 5,000 miles, that's pretty far. It has a developing economy, but low wage rates, and there is some evidence of poor employment practices in the country, some evidence of use of underage labor, minors in the hotel industry has been found. Very interesting. Villandia, it is a developing economy, low wages, some evidence of poor employment practices, and some evidence of use of underage labors. And Villandia has a thriving tourism industry, very, very important. So some information pertain to Comfy Stay Hotel and some information pertain to Villandia so this okay, this one was target company and this is a target country okay some key investment data based on a six-year investment plan now this is a financial projection Note all figures used have been converted into DLN's home currency dollars. Looks good to me. So it, if you look at the columns, there is year zero, year one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there are 
in year zero there essentially there is initial investments i believe that initial investment must be the acquisition cost and some refurbishment costs so there are total cost of 90 and then year one there are revenues year two year three year four year five year six and then uh, there is some i don't know there's some misprint here let me see uh environmental investment okay so this word here this one is basically let me write it so that you guys don't get confused um this one is basically environmental investment okay so uh, we will be spending money on environment one million dollars each year and then we'll be spending money on training costs and then there will be operating costs and then there is a total cost row and then there are cash flow so this is a uh, cash flow right so it's minus 90 in year zero and then in year one it is 17 499 and then so forth and we use the discount factor so it means it's a discounted cash flow okay you see all these things these are very it's a cash flow and it's a discounted cash flow and then they calculated a present value and finally the net present value is 10.5 million dollars additional information it is expected that some of D lands hotel managers would need to relocate to Valandia for approximately three to 12 months on a temporary basis to assist in training and staff development in the first year of operations and will be required to carry out ongoing mentoring activities for next two years. So we would need to depute our current hotel managers to Valandia. So can I say HR? It's a human resource aspect. Secondly, finance for this investment would be available through a combination of equity and debt financing. Very important piece. How are we gonna finance? Through equity and debt finance. So can I say financial resource? What else? That's it. So, I noticed something in revenues. Please look at the revenue. Please think that you are a CFO and your subordinate has submitted to you this worksheet. I noticed immediately, I noticed something is wrong in the revenue. Look at year one, look at year two. Are you able to spot it? yes smita excellent and then look at year three four five and six no mohammed sachal it's not step increase it's constant for first two years and then again constant for next four years a step increases which i think a step increase means revenue which is increasing gradually I don't think this is stepping in this. So um, as a CFO, I, I think that uh, the revenues doesn't seem good to me or doesn't seem realistic. How can be the revenues of first two years be exactly the same? And then how can the revenues of year three to six exactly the same? So this is something I would like to highlight. That's it. So. So now we are equipped. So we got information about target company. We got information about target comes with. This is a target company. And this is target country. And we got financial projections. Okay. So now uh, let's start drafting. 
this is um, let me select a nice marker here Just give me a second. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the question again. Is there any format required? Are we supposed to give any format? Do you remember examiner's comment yesterday that students do not focus on format? So let's look at the question again. Using the fact sheet, da, 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 prepare a report for the finance director, which evaluates the proposal to acquire Comfy Stay Hotel. So we need a report format. As usual, we will give a big heading in the center Okay, then there will be a two from subject and date. So two is finance director from what is our role? I think we were senior business analyst remember it was mentioned in the introduction subject now subject has to be very short and should come out from the question how about proposal to acquire a comfy hotel comfy stay um, Okay, and date would be DD month month year year. Again, I draw a line to bifurcate the headers. Okay, are you are you okay with this starting? I think it's pretty simple. Hmm? And then we will give a heading introduction. So in yesterday we did a briefing note or a briefing paper there was no heading of introduction there there was just two lines of opening paragraph in report we give a heading introduction and then we just give an opening paragraph and where do we pick the opening pen sentence from again um, i can uh, pick draft the opening sentence from the requirement this reports Evaluate da da da. Can you pick from the requirement these lines? Do not try and waste your time in 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 drafting a a, a flowery, beautiful opening sentence. We have to save time. So just be very short. This report evaluates the. Let me see proposal or proposed acquisition proposal to acquire comfy stay hotel chain. Okay, evaluates the proposal to acquire comfy stay hotel chain based in Villandia. That's it. Okay. So, <coughs> so we are done with the opening sentence. Now, so we are now done with the <coughs> format aspect. Look at carefully look at the format. I have reduced the size. There, there will be a central heading, then two from subject date, and then an introduction. So this is a proper report format. Now the next heading would be now we will directly hit our answer. We will say suitability. 
Now, how many paragraphs should I give under suitability? Very good, Umas, Huda, Laiba, Chris. Perfect. So we need to give three paragraphs under suitability. Uh, first paragraph will talk about our home country. What are the challenges? Why we are thinking of moving internationally, expanding internationally, all that in first paragraph. The second paragraph, target country, which is Vilandia. Please do not use the word target country in your drafting. We will use the word Vilandia all across. And then we will, a third paragraph will talk something about target company, which is Comfy Stay. So, what are the challenges we are facing in home country? I mean, we know all the good things, brand and staffing and location and pricing, but I read somewhere that there is a fierce competition. Remember, eco economy is good, industry, pricing, location, mar here. You see how my referencing helped me? See this one? I was immediately able to spot where I read something about competition. So read this line. Highlight faces fierce competition from several home-based and international hotel chains. And then I like this word, fierce competition. I can use this in my sentence. And then uh, anything else? Uh, Brand, staff, location, financials, digital. Again, I see competition, something here. Let's read it. Competitors' dynamics are changing through both traditional and disruptive channels. Okay, I like that. And then look at this one. Look at this. Why did I circle this international growth? You know, the CEO himself is saying that there the four key strategic themes for the future is A, B, C, D, and one of the four themes is international growth. Okay. So, I think we've got enough points about home country. We will say uh, the, or maybe um, uh, just a second, guys. Uh, I need to rub this. Okay. I'm just trying to recall the competitor dynamics are changing. And then I'll just quickly talk about which is also focus. Uh, there are exciting opportunities outside D land as international area, international growth is an area of, of development for highlight. Further, there are good opportunities of growth outside DLAN. That's it. So one paragraph on home country or the challenges we are facing now or uh, the reason why we are thinking of going abroad. 
okay so let me quickly go through the questions uh, dynamic competition environment perfectly right omas cost pressure yes files not in pdf edel yes the files are in pdf it's all shared in the handout section sir what in the question hinted us to use sfa framework muniba i think you were not present yesterday sfa framework is used whenever we plan to acquire another company acquire another company okay sir page is getting stuck um no i think it's 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 working fine now uh sir should we use hide sir should we use highlight is facing fierce competition or we are facing um umas i think uh we can use uh, a combination of both highlight and v uh, but i think i would uh, uh, we can also use the word v because i am also an employee of this company i am an internal person right abdullah yes it's necessary to use sfa for acquisition yes it is will these files be shared yes highlight wants to diversify no they are not they are um, they are diversifying geographically okay i i'm not connect i i think you should not use the word diversification in this case they are just expanding geographically okay diversification might have a little bit different meaning a uh, communication skills and commercial aisha please uh, stick to the question right now please do not ask questions which is currently not relevant to the question we are doing right now we will cover commercial acumen and commercial skills communication skills in next question from a budget to luxury one can we write like this is our company is facing yes taslima yes you can because you are an insider employee you can also say our company or we perfectly fine all right so suitability the first para is done now we need to draft the second para which should talk about the target country which is vilandia so where is the information on target country i think it was on the fact sheet somewhere target country so vilandia is 5000 miles from d land it's a developing economy low wages poor employment practices use of underage labor but it's got a thriving tourism industry so just you need to mention uh, these these sentences under second paragraph i would start with positive thing that vilandia has a thriving tourism economy but uh, you know if i start drafting uh, we will spend a lot of time here so but do i just want to demonstrate to you the technique so we will input information from these paragraphs okay we will start with positive things first that vilandia has a as a booming tourism industry and uh, it has got uh, the economy is developing uh, the wages the, there are low wage rates however Uh, there are some evidence of poor employment practices as well as use of underage labor that's it as simple as this my friends okay and then i need you uh, we need to uh, draft the third paragraph which will talk about the comfy stay hotel again the first three bullets just use you know uh, consolidate this information into a paragraph form we will say comfy stay hotel is a family run business they have got 20 hotels and they have been in business for last 18 years they are mid range now that's very important they are mid range hotels unlike us because we are budget hotels and the uh, comfy host uh, stay has lack investment in the last 10 years so i just rearranged the information uh, positive things first negative negative things second okay so i just repeat the paragraph we will say comfy stay hotel 
is a family run business they have been in they have got 20 hotels and in the business for last 18 years they are mid-range hotels unlike us we as we are budget hotels however they lack investment in the last 10 years that's it believe me it is as simple as this as i said yesterday try to pick up sentences from the exhibits themselves 70 percent of your drafting should come out from the exhibit 30 percent you can add or less on your own but the bulk of the sentences should be from the exhibit this is especially for those students who have got weak English then instead of trying to draft something in your own language I would suggest that you pick up wording from the exhibits copy paste the wording just change the sequence a little bit just change the grammar a little bit and make your life easy okay so now we have completed suitability three paragraphs you have covered let me go through the questions uh, Aston is asking is it acceptable for examiner to take lines from question to use in your answer yes uh, you just uh, listen you from the exhibits you have to pick information right so if you are picking information that doesn't mean you are copying just the grammar a little bit you can change but the information will never change so bulk of the exhibit contains information like mid-range hotel not a budget hotel 20 hotels 18 years family run business lack of investment all these are sentences but they're also facts so you can copy 70 80 percent from the exhibits no issues in that family run business means it's probably probably lacks good corporate governance which is a con you are right ahmed but you don't need to write all this crap you don't have the time in the exam okay stick to the basic should we only talk about the positives in the target company no 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 ali there is a professional skills marks for evaluation skill and evaluation skill means you have to talk about both pros and cons okay should we talk about uh, sir can you use word file no altaf i am using a pdf it can't be done now uh, what does it mean by budget hotel budget hotel means that cheap hotels they compete based on low price sir as mentioned that in Valandia evidence are found of under labor da 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 and we used to promote our brand in Valandia by showing that we support this initiative and we will not be part of this uh, correct your point is very good umes um but you don't talk about these things in in under exam conditions and there is another question question number 2a which in which exact these aspects are uh, we need to cover in that so it will be a repetition sir culture can be used in suitability no culture we will talk about under acceptability sir no need to mention implication in each point this is nawaz uh, nawaz uh, if we the short answer is no if we try and mention implication for each and every point your answer will get very very lengthy and you will miss the time management correct so unless you are very fast reader and you are very fast in your writing uh, you can complete the paper 30 minutes before the time then yes then you can add implication on each point but if you are a average student like me <laughs> so do not give implication listen guys we are not trying to or my approach is not to make sure that each one of you scores 80 marks my objective here in this five days is to make sure everybody of you passes and scores like 55 or 65 marks so giving implications is very ideal but not everybody can do that right uh, L 
under suitability only three paragraph would be sufficient at total six marks 16 Aisha please don't ask dumb questions 16 marks is not for suitability uh, 16 marks is for the entire thing right feasibility and acceptability so just wait and just be patient how can I ask questions directly just type in the question box do we have to conclude Yasin? No, no. I yesterday, you know, talked a lot about this. No need for conclusions. Uh, sir, we are required to interpret the information according to the requirements. What do you suggest if we take like three lines of data? How much lines or points we are supposed to make on it according to? I will explain that. Um, after this question sir what the labor behavior is opposite to um, i'm just quickly going through the questions ikra is asking sir should we talk about our company's competencies or resources under suitability no, it's a big conceptual mistake. You do not talk about companies own competencies under suitability internal suitability uh, like uh, suitability focuses on external factors only companies competencies are covered under feasibility. Okay. Hamza. Uh, just if just write the implication whatever you think is right uh, I cannot explain to one person right now most people are asking the same question as and I already replied that it is acceptable by the examiner if you repeat lines up to a certain degree okay All right, so we are good with the questions. Let's move on. So now we will talk about feasibility. So our next heading is under feasibility, you need to talk about human resource, financial resource, IT, brand. Human resource. I saw something. So in human resource, if you recall, if you recall, what do we look at? Look, we look at these three things. We look at whether we have business experience, whether we have acquisition experience in the past, and we whether we have overseas business experience. Okay, so does highlight has business experience does highlight has business experience absolutely yes we are the market leaders in our country okay so definitely there is no doubt that we have got the expertise and the competencies to manage a hotel business right do we have acquisition experience in the past? No, very good. I read somewhere that in probably in the introduction somewhere that so far um, highlight has grow, grown organically from two hotels to 510 hotels. Yes, Huda, absolutely internally. So we don't have any acquisition. Uh, this will be our first acquisition experience. Thirdly, do we have overseas business experience? No, very good. You guys are really on top of the case. I'm really impressed. So just write three paragraphs, you know, uh, just, just write a paragraph on human resource. Do not give a heading. But just write that um, although you know, we do have the managed business and management expertise, however, we do not have any experience of acquisition in the past. 
and similarly we do not have any experience of uh, doing business outside the land okay that's it then what do we look at uh, then we look at financial resource under financial resource we, we need to say whether we have the funds to finance the deal so i think i read somewhere in the fact sheet i read somewhere you see this financial resources finance for this investment would be available through a combination of equity and debt financing just you know mention this information as paragraph number two that we do have the finance to to we do have the funds to finance this acquisition through a combination of equity and debt financing okay and lastly what do we have to say we need to talk about it and brand okay so do we have technology which we may use in vilandia and do we have a brand which me we may use in vilandia yes sayed jalal aisha yes so we so just can you write one small paragraph uh, i believe it's the third paragraph right one two three in which we will say that we do we have significantly invested in our technology and we can use the technology in vilandia also we have a strong brand which may be used in vilandia that's it so three paragraphs under feasibility the first paragraph talks about human resource followed by financial resource and then it and brand now we talk about acceptability so you give a heading first of all i need to see three paragraphs okay the first paragraph okay before i move to acceptability let me quickly go through the questions ikra is saying can we add the point that we have experience in budget hotels but this is a mid range hotel so things might be different yes very good point as long as you are able to cover this under the allocated time then go for it uh 80 million has been invested yes you can use this point sir can i write that rising gearing ratio may would pressure no please do not give extra information you are theoretically right uh ubaidur ubaidur rahman you are theoretically right but under exam conditions i do not expect you to write all these things otherwise you will simply you know not be able to complete the paper sir can we calculate gearing ratio and can we write some things on gearing and financial sources no please uh, you will miss the deadline or or the time management and for gearing you need to have financial information uh, that's not given in this scenario right do you have a balance sheet and a pnl no sir giving headings of sfa doesn't itself mean that we are mentioning the framework and in the beginning you told us not to mention the framework it's fine i'm not mentioning the framework i'm just giving some basic headings just do that it's fine it's not a problem sir pros and cons of professional marks should be in each point of saf or only some good question najila uh, she's asking uh, sir pros and cons should be in each point or in some points it is supposed to be in some points okay it all depends on the information available it cannot be possibly it cannot be possible in each and every point so wherever you see negative points you just mentioned so it is a, it, it's supposed to be not in all the points but in some points only 
isn't that part of acceptability financials yes acceptability ah uh, the financials of the target company is part of acceptability please remember there are two financial we are talking about our own resources will be covered under feasibility and the financial projections of the target company will be covered under acceptability okay is that clear ali we are a listed company and so acquisition could be not acceptable by the shareholder because we always use organic growth okay umas that's a good point we will talk about it sfa 1a and 2b requirement has external internal points uh, i yeah uh, sfa uh, 1a was a uh, internal i don't know i didn't get your question payback and npv has been based on estimated cost like training cost da 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 and then drop down do need need to do need to add these points aisha no please don't uh, you don't have to go into a lot of detail okay otherwise you will miss the time management thing uh is it possible for you to give us one drafted answer yes i will share the draft answer after the class that's i will share it on the whatsapp group so if you are if not, if you guys are not present on the whatsapp group please message me and i will add you all right acceptability the first thing is we need to talk about shareholders so are we a private limited company or are we a listed company do you remember in somewhere in the introduction it said that we are a listed company very good so since we are a listed company uh the shareholders will accept something if it is if if it's got a positive npv okay so let's look at the fact sheet how's the npv looking so there the npv is 10.565 million dollars and what's the total initial investment i think it's 90 million and the npv is 10.5 million if i quickly divide this just to see the percentage return 10.6 divided by 90 that's around i would say 11.7 percent return i divided net present value by the total cost okay so without complicating the answer i would just say the proposed acquisition may be acceptable to our shareholders as the projections are showing a positive npv of dollar 10.565 million which is 11.7 percent return that's it okay uh, i think one of you mentioned earlier that the shareholders may not accept the proposal because we have always grown um, organically and we don't have experience of acquisition you are absolutely right but under exam situation please do not give you know lengthy stories i just need you to give one basic point and move on okay so one of the main key drivers of acquisition of shareholders would be whether the deal is positive or not 
whether it is increasing shareholders wealth or not so if there's if it's got a positive NPV I think it should be acceptable that's why I use the word may be acceptable I'm just being diplomatic okay after that so this one paragraph is on shareholders the second paragraph uh, needs to talk about cultural differences payback would be 5.23 years yes uh, can I pay back payback let's mention the payback as well uh, also that's a good one uh, I like it OMS also the payback is reasonable at 5.3 years that's good this will really impress the examiner now second para will talk about cultural differences so just look I, you just need to write a standard sentence just I will just draft it for you OK, this is a standard wording which you can use since Vilandia is another country. We will need to consider any cultural differences. That's it. And the third paragraph will talk about the financial projections. So give a small heading. And let's quickly go through the checklist. You remember the checklist? So the first thing we need to see is whether these projections are based on discounted cash flow. Mm, so let me go through the fact sheet. Is this based on discounted cash flow? Yes. Sir. So that's fine. Um, no need to mention if it's based on discounted cash flow. Anything else? Review any assumptions for apparent mistakes. So I saw some, uh, you know, um, in the revenues, I felt that the assumptions doesn't seem right. There may be other aspects as well. If you see the operating costs, they are also uh, following the same thing the year one and year two of operating costs are same and then year three four five six are same so no need to go into more details just write one observation the revenue and operating cost assumptions needs to be validated as they seem constant for years one and two and then for years three to six that's it okay what else so we talked about this one we talked about this one quickly calculate payback and mention in your answer did we do that yes we did that right and we mentioned somewhere in our draft here We mentioned that here okay very good so we've done step number three and what's step number four mention in your answer that a sensitivity analysis should be done okay so we'll just draft a standard sentence 
however it is suggested that a sensitivity analysis should also be done so that we can um, review other uh, we can review uh, That's it. So guys, um, do you see three paragraphs under acceptability? The first one was shareholder. Second one was cultural. And the third one talked about financial projections. And for financial projections, we followed our checklist. And whatever was missing, we mentioned that. Um, I like the point which Furkan mentioned. He said tax is not incorporated in NPV table. Should we write in this para? I, yeah. I think tax can also be a good thing. Uh, also, we can just say also tax implications need to be covered in the calculations. Thank you for Khan. I like the point tax. Right, so let me quickly go through the questions. Um, I will talk about the WhatsApp link in the end. Um, yes, I will give a break in a little bit. Initial investment is 90 or 80. It's 90. It's 80 plus 10. Whatever you spend in year zero is the initial investment. Cultural web. Who is this? My God, Altaf. Can we use cultural web? Forget about this cultural web. You are going into a dangerous territory. Just write the standard two lines and move on. Inflation not taken into account. No, Junaid, the discount factor includes inflation as well. So do not mention this. For WhatsApp, I will share the group in the end. Please bear with me. Do not ask same in, uh, you know, uh, same question again and again. Can we mention discounted as pro to get professional marks too? Yeah, you can say that, you know, the cash flow, the projections are based on discounted cash flow. That's fine. Tax, we talked about it. Sir, which amount we will take in payback for initial investment? Year zero. LIBA or always whatever amount in year zero is the initial investment. Okay. So the total amount of outflow in year zero is 90. So you use 90. Bullet points. No, no, no. Can we make bullet points rather than paragraph? No, no, no. Abdul Mannan, the examiner hates bullet point. When we submit a report to the board, they prefer paragraph style. Okay, not bullet style. Human capital for feasibility. We talked about human resources. We talked about three things under feasibility under human resources. So uh, I don't know what extra you want to talk about. Aisha, please do not complicate due to increase in equity and debt. Would it be acceptable to show that? Da, 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 da. My God, you are giving an exam. You will have uh, like 40 minutes to read and draft this answer. You can't ex actually cover all these points under exam conditions. So please do not go for extra points you are theoretically right but not for under exam conditions 
for acceptability should we talk about shareholders or also stakeholders please stick to shareholders is it enough for 20 marks absolutely enough can we add headings in report headings in report no just give head headings like suitability acceptability feasibility do not give subheadings like human resource or financial resource okay right so we did sfa <clears throat> what i feel what i feel by looking at the comments is that most of you are used to giving perfect answers your more your points are pretty much valid but from an exam condition point of view you should try and just stick with bare minimum basic answers otherwise there is a high risk that your time management will get out of control if you want to pass sbl time management is number one critical thing okay so i you i need you to focus on time management rather than giving a perfect answer so now here's the case so on one hand there is an option that you give a perfect answer but then you overrun the time the second possibility is that you don't give a perfect answer you just give a basic to the point answer but you are able to complete on time which one would you prefer so for sbl yes sbl the in terms of priority time management is more important than a perfect answer i repeat for sbl time management is more important than a perfect answer if your perfect answer can be done within the allocated time i have no issues go for it but if you are not able to complete the perfect answer within the allocated time then do not go for perfect answers just give one basic logic and move on okay cool so now here we end our SAF model. Abdullah is asking, what if we answer without SAF? Yes, not a problem. As I mentioned yesterday, you can answer without using a, a model. But then you have to make sure that you cover all the points and they are presented in a logical flow. Okay, so what SAF does is it kinds of presents the information in a logical flow suitability talks about external feasibility talks about internal acceptability talks about financials right so now uh, guys uh, um, what I want to do is uh, we start our today's session okay which is day two and i want to first talk about the exam techniques then i will give a break okay in today's uh, thing agenda i want to talk about exam technique right now and then i will give a break and then we will come back and start our practice for today is that all right Okay, so I think exam techniques would take around 10 to 15 minutes. So, so today, today's plan is I will talk about exam techniques. And then today's topic are social and environmental factors, pastel, Porter five forces, and maybe integrated reporting but i don't think we will have the time okay so if we will if we are not able to do integrated reporting i will spill it over to tomorrow professional skills we will talk about evaluation skill and communication skill uh, press release all these things okay so today's exam technique is time management ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i want your full attention 
time management is the second biggest problem in SBL as per the examiner. The first biggest problem was discussed yesterday. The first biggest problem was that students do not do not uh, link their answers to the case. Correct? So I taught you the technique yesterday. The second uh, biggest thing uh, is time management. How do we manage our time? Right, so there are two aspects. Reading and planning time and then followed by writing or drafting time. So your paper is four hours. So you have to spend 60 minutes on reading, like the first hour on reading and the remaining three hours on writing. OK, is that clear? So your reading and planning time is 60 minutes. You have to stick with that. Now, um, by experience, uh, by teaching so many SBL students, I know that most of you might not be able to complete your reading in 60 minutes. Uh, maybe uh, the last attempt question was small question. Pe most people were able to complete, but by and large, generally, uh, it takes like 70 minutes to complete the reading. OK, but we have to make sure that we read in 60 minutes and do the planning in all 60 minutes. So how do we save time? The first thing is. You have to. First read the introduction very, very carefully like we did yesterday. You have to digest. You have to visualize. So sp spend good time on introduction. And then you have to read all the requirements as well. And then you have to make a small list of the requirements. Remember yesterday I showed you that we have to make a small list of requirements on the last page of your answer sheet. All this will take time. Maybe I think 15 to 15 minutes uh, might be taken when you read the introduction carefully, when you read all the requirements, when you make the list. Up on an average, it might take you 15 minutes. So you are left with 45 minutes to read the six exhibits and that could be pretty challenging. All right, so what do we do? First of all, look at this. Oops, sorry, sorry. Normally, out of six exhibits, normally three exhibits contains information which is to be used in multiple questions. OK. And. Remaining three exhibits contains information to be used in one particular question, which is. A one to one. Exhibits, OK. Um, those exhibits which contains multiple information, they are time consuming. And those exhibits which are one to one, they take less time. OK, so I want you to focus more on the these exhibits. This one, I want you to spend the first read those exhibits which are multi question exhibits and once you have read all the multi question exhibits which is normally three then you second then you come to those exhibits which are one to one so normally these exhibits what students do they read in sequence they read one and then these read exhibit two and then the exhibit three and then four and five and six but what I am saying is do not read in sequence. First you read those exhibits which has covers multiple questions. And then after that you read those exhibits which are one to one and Najia. Is asking what is the meaning of one to one? Oh, OK, one to one exhibit means it's an exhibit a. 
uh, which contains information which only if this which is supposed to be used in only one particular question like we did SFA you remember this fact sheet so that fact sheet was a classic example of one to one that fact sheet was only used in requirement 1b so it was a one to one exhibit okay So the important question is how do we know which exhibits are one to one and how do we know which exhibits are multiple exhibits right for Khan this is what you're asking exactly so you, when we do a lot of questions you would automatically come to know but generally these are multiple exhibits normally these board minutes annual reports websites information newspaper articles interview notes all these generally will contain a variety of information which are expected to be used in multiple questions okay and then anything other than these anything other than board minutes other than annual report other than newspaper articles are generally supposed to be one to one like a fact sheet fact sheet one to one financial projections one to one there might be some other specific uh, things one to one so once we do a lot once we read a lot of exhibits you would I hope that after two, three, four, like by the last day, you would be able to judge which exhibit is multiple and which exhibit is one to one. Sometimes the examiner also mentions the exhibit numbers in the question. Okay, so it will help you identify. Sometimes when you read the exhibit, the first few lines you will read, you will know it's one to one. So there are many ways to find out. Okay, so what I'm saying is, first read those exhibits which are multiple for the one to one do not read them during the first one hour you can take a quick look nobody is stopping you to take a quick look so the for the one to one exhibits you may take a quick look you may spend one minute on it you just go through the broad headings the broad high level information and move on spend the first 60 minutes on complicated exhibits okay I repeat spend the first 60 minutes reading time on complicated exhibits do not waste the first 60 minutes on straightforward one-to-one -one exhibit okay so once you run up once you once your 60 minutes are up what will happen you may miss reading the one-to-one -one exhibits correct well, you have to anyways read one to one exhibit when you are about to start drafting your answer. So, so we will read those exhibits when we start drafting the answer. Correct. This is very, very important. This thing. What to do if reading time is up? Most likely if you know people whose English um, is weak, um, whose mother tongue is not English or if their reading speed is slow, most likely you might overrun the 60 minutes. What do you do? You just stop reading and immediately proceed to the drafting aspect. Okay, this is very, very important. Do not overrun on your reading time because if listen to me carefully because if you overrun your reading time let's say by 10 minutes you are actually hijacking 10 minutes from your drafting time your 10 your drafting time is automatically reduced by 10 minutes even before you have started drafting your answer it will land you in serious deficit okay the moment 60 minutes are up no matter how much is left you just stop reading whatever is left we will read that once we come to the drafting of that particular question 
okay spend the first 60 minutes on multiple exhibits and skip the one to one exhibits because one to one we can always read once we start drafting that particular question do you guys understand the technique of the first 60 minutes i want a yes or a no very good thank you so much now it is easier said than done but we have to practice towards it it might be a little bit difficult in the start but the more we practice the more easier it will become because you have never done these kind of techniques in the past because you have never seen such a paper in the past you might struggle a bit but we will work on it don't worry always six exhibits yes always six exhibits does drafting answer plan for each question in the answer sheet no um, answer planning you will spend time right so anything which consumes time is disaster i taught the referencing technique yesterday so please go through my video mega no exhibits will always be six no five no seven of six exhibits okay so now once 60 hour minutes are up our drafting starts so what are the techniques for drafting so you've got like six like sorry you've got like um three hours for drafting okay which means 180 minutes so if you divide 180 minutes by 100 marks it simply works out to be 1.8 minutes per mark okay per total mark this is a very important word 1.8 minutes per total mark and what do i mean by total mark i mean technical mark plus professional mark so if you remember the SFA question we did, it was 16 marks for the report. And it, then there was four marks for evaluation skills and total marks was 20. Okay, so the 16 marks, this is called technical marks and four marks, this is called professional marks and total marks is 20. All right. So look at this 1.8 minutes per total mark. So how much time uh, we have to spend on that question? You look at total marks, multiply it by 1.8 minutes. And I don't know how much uh, that works out. Uh, I think 36 minutes let me calculate on my calculator da, 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 20 into 1.8 is 36 minutes yeah so now can you thank you chris thank you live can you recall in retrospect that you guys were giving me so many nice points we can look at gearing we can do we can look at impact on this and that would you be able to draft your answer in 36 minutes if you really go for additional information in your answers no way even i cannot do it okay right so the reason why i'm saying total marks is because if you read examiners uh, articles they these guys focus they they suggest spending two point uh, 2.1 minutes per technical mark okay so i i feel that you know you for to score professional marks you have to spend some time for example if you need to draft a report so the report format will take two minutes 
or if you have to draft a presentation slide or a briefing note all the formats they take time so i prefer allocating allocating marks based on total marks and not technical marks okay so our benchmark is 1.8 minutes per total mark now how do we keep track of our time that's a big thing so we know we need to spend 36 minutes on the sfa question but the bigger problem is once we are writing we are in the flow we lose track of time and by the time we realize it's already five seven minutes over so the important thing is how do we keep track of the time um i spoke with many students and a couple of students what they used to do was they used to write the ending time in front of each question as soon as they receive the question paper i repeat so they used to calculate the ending time for each question and they used to write the ending time on the each question on the question paper as soon as they received the question paper so for example um, you calculate the time if it if your paper starts at 2 p.m okay if your paper starts at 2 p.m so 2 to 3 p.m is your reading time so 301 from 301 p.m your drafting will start and supposing you've got like 36 minutes you will the ending time would be 336 you write 336 p.m in front of the sfa question you write the actual time when you have to stop so they used to calculate the time based on 1.8 minutes and write those ending time in front of each question on the question paper and so that they don't have to actually you know they just uh, can see the ending time and their watch and manage themselves do you understand this technique the game here is you write the ending time for each question before as soon as you receive the question paper now the next thing is length of your answer i believe that time management is dependent on length management did you get that okay let me repeat i believe that time management is dependent on length management the more you write the more time it will take so it is my personal view that there's nothing there's nothing called time management actually if you want to control your time it has to be length management so if you know how much to write most likely you will fit under the time management but if you don't know how much to write and if you keep on writing and keep on writing definitely your time management will get out of control okay so what's the length five lines per total mark excluding format please look at this very very carefully the ideal length is five marks per to five lines per total marks excluding format so what do i mean by excluding format like if you are making a report please do not count the lines relating to to from subject date and introduction these are part and parcel of the report so do not count these lines after that it has to be five lines so five lines excluding format all right secondly uh, five lines can be can also be four lines and may also become six lines a little bit of variation is acceptable 
depending on the information available and how difficult the requirement is. But five lines cannot become 10 lines. Okay, so a little bit of variation is acceptable, but not a lot. Try to stick with five lines and if you write five lines in five lines, you will be able to explain one point and you will be able to manage your time. Okay. Let me um, look at the comments. What is meant by per total mark? It is one mark or two? No, okay. By per total mark, I mean technical marks plus professional marks. I mean total marks for the question, okay? I'm not talking about one mark or two marks. Total marks for the question, and I just showed you this example. Uh, you see this example? So this is total mark. Can you see this? So please avoid asking questions that it, you know, it kind of uh, repeats. I, I have to repeat stuff then. Uh, sir, some teachers say that only read first requirement and then read whole case study. They say that by reading all requirements together, your, your mind could crash and confuse. Oh, mess, I disagree. Uh, I, I think you were not there yesterday. I actually taught a technique called how to link with exhibits and for that we have to read all the requirements. Uh, Sayyid Jalal is saying, I think it may not be possible to write five lines. Why Jalal? Why not possible? What do you have in mind? More lines or less lines? For two marks, how many lines are required? Muhammad Saifullah, I will kill you. Can anybody tell me for two marks how much lines are required? Yeah, 10 lines, perfect. Okay, uh, Muhammad Saadullah, I was just kidding. Now you understand. Uh, sir, can you guide in terms of sentences as well? I don't know what that means. Uh, in previous question, we wrote not more than three lines, max four. Are they enough for total marks? Yes. Uh, Abdul Manan, in previous question, uh, what's more important is total number of lines. So you don't have to write exactly five lines for each paragraph. Okay. In total for now let's 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 move on and I will show you in totality what's happening. So the third aspect is number of points. I can see many students who are asking me the number of points. So again, the length dip depends on the number of points. So in SBL, one point, a good, well explained, well linked point carries two marks. Okay. One point carries two marks. That's the general rule of thumb. There are certain exceptions. For example, uh, in certain questions, sometimes you are asked to identify the weakness and then give recommendations. Okay, in certain questions, you are first required to identify weakness and then give recommendation. In, in these questions, I would go for three marks because we are supposed to identify the weakness and then give recommendation then two marks is less. And then in certain questions you are expected to identify weakness plus implication plus recommendation. Now the three things are required in those case I will go for four marks for each point. Okay, but by and large as a rule of thumb I would suggest two marks for one point. So now this is your IQ test. So supposing the question is 10 marks in total. Eight marks technical, two marks professional, total marks is 10 marks. How much time for 10 marks? Let me see. Please mention how much time you will spend for 10 marks. How much drafting time? Hmm, correct. Why, 
what should be the length of your answer for 10 marks? How many lines excluding the format? Perfect, 50 lines in total, right? Now this 50 lines could be 40, 45, or it could be 55 to 60, okay? But not less than 40 and not less more than 60. Ideally 50 lines plus minus five lines here or there doesn't make a difference. So focus on the total number of lines and how many number of points for 10 marks? five points so if you are not able to give five points i'm okay with four points we don't have a choice right <laughs> okay but three points would be very less ideally five points plus minus one so for five points either you can give four points or maximum six points but nothing less than four and nothing more than six try to focus on five points this is a very interesting triangle which has been created by me. It's copyright, patented, trademark. <laughs> Do you like it? Do you understand? So all teachers, they talk about bloody time management, but nobody tells us how to manage the time. The root cause of bad time management is bad length management and bad points management. To focus, if you automatically focus on the length of your answers and the number of points, most likely your time management will improve. Length, uh, 10 marks are technical. Oh my God, Abdullah, Umrah, please be attentive. 10 marks are technical or technical plus professional. It is technical plus professional is equal to total, okay? I hate these kind of questions. Sir, length, explain again, Mars. By length means the number of lines you have supposed to write, okay? So the length has to be, the rule of thumb is five lines per mark. So if the question is 10 marks, how much lines you are supposed to write? five multiplied by 10 marks 50 lines is this clear my dear mas <laughs> all right omes thank you for that you're very observant 100 marks for technical what's that ipad 69 i didn't get that question it, 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 uh, sbl is uh, 80 marks technical 20 marks professional total is 100 okay right now, this is very important. What to do if the writing time is up? What to do if the writing time is up? So, so we allocated like 36 minutes for our SFA question, right? So our SFA question was 20 marks. So for that, we had 36 minutes. We had to write how many lines? Five to the 10. 100 lines which effectively means um, four pages three to four pages of your answer sheet and number of points should be 10 to 12 points okay so this was our sfa question which we did what you will do if your 36 minutes are up Simply you will stop writing and then you will leave some lines and move to the next question. Do not hijack the time of the next question. I repeat, do not hijack the time relating to the next question. If this question, if your existing question's time is up, you just stop writing, leave half a page, and move to the next question. In the end, in the end, in case you are left with 
some time, you can always go back and complete. Okay. Right. So can I um, share one real example? And then I will give a break. One of my student, her re reading and her drafting speed was very slow. So I was teaching this physical batch. There were like 70 students in that batch. She was one of the students uh, whose writing speed was very slow. And in that particular batch, most students failed because the paper was really, really difficult. And all of them said that they were not able to complete the paper. On an average, they were able to do 80 to 85 marks, which means they missed 20, 15 to 20 marks. Okay. Did you understand the stats? So most of them, they were just able to do 80, 85 marks paper and they missed 15 to 20 marks because the time ran out. And because, because they just attempted 80 to 85 marks, they scored 45 marks and of course they failed. Right? But I told them that in my eyes, you guys are pass. If you attempted 80 and you scored 45, that's more than 50%, right? So you passed. But because you did not attempt the 100 marks, you were not able to cross 50 marks. Okay. So in terms of percentage, you pass, but in total, you fail. Did you understand this? Now, this particular girl who was very slow in drafting, she passed. And everybody was surprised because in all the practice and mocks, she was always unable to complete her answer. Um, and But in the exam, she passed and everybody else failed. And how did she pass? So I called her on the stage and we, I, you know, I just asked her in front of everybody, please tell us the secret. You were so slow. How the hell you passed? And I was surprised what she said. She said that, sir, I strictly followed my time management. None of my answer was complete. I repeat. She said, none of my answer was complete but I attempted all the questions. Did you understand that? So she attempted all the questions, but none of her answer was complete. The moment her time was up, she used to jump to the next question. The moment the time for the next question was up, she used to jump to the next to next question. So she did, she attempted all the questions and none of the questions was complete. And she passed, she got like 56 marks. And others who did all the questions completely, but they overran and in the last they missed 20 marks. None of them passed. They ended up with 45. So now choice is yours. This is your decision. Uh, whether you want to do proper time management and jump to the next question or you want to overrun the time and hijack the time for next question. This is food for thought for you guys. And with that, I will take a 10 minutes break and it's 9.54 in my watch. I will see you at 9, no, 10.05. All right, see you in a bit.
Hi everybody, um, I am back. I just want to double check whether you are able to hear me clearly and see the screen. Just type yes. Thank you so much. Perfect, perfect. Right, so we just talked about the time management techniques and in summary, we have to spend the first one hour in reading. Uh, we will first focus on reading those exhibits which are multiple uh, requirement exhibits and then we will uh, read those exhibits which are one to one we will stop reading as soon as 60 minutes are up so that in case our um, reading is not complete then what we will miss are one to one exhibits it's not a big deal on the writing side we have exactly three hours we will spend 1.8 minutes per mark um, and as soon as the allocated time is up we will stop writing leave some space and move to the next question in terms of length of your answer uh, the ideal rule of thumb is five lines per mark plus minus a little bit and uh, in terms of number of points one point generally carries two marks okay so with that Let's quickly um, hit today's topic and I would like to speed up a bit. Um, social and environmental footprint, pestle, porter five forces and integrated reporting we will be doing tomorrow. Social footprints. So all organizations they have, uh, you know, they exist for shareholders, they exist for profitability. However, the economic activities have two implications and organizations has have social impacts and the organization also has environmental impacts so social footprint means the organization's social impact whenever we talk about social footprints there are three things you need to talk about social footprint includes employees our customers and suppliers society and community Remember, whenever you get a question on social footprint, you need to touch upon employees, customers, suppliers, society. When we talk about employees, what do we mean? All these aspects, staff turnover, staff training, working conditions, reasonable pay scales, gender equality, no discrimination, health and safety, diversity, all these fancy words pertains to employees and staffing. When we talk about customers or suppliers, what kind of things we look at? Quality of the product, the product safety, personal data and privacy, fair business practices, fair play with suppliers, all these are covered under customers and suppliers and when we talk about society and community it talks about job opportunities and CSR okay similarly when we talk about environmental footprint it simply means the effect the organization has on the earth the ecological environment so some these are some keywords which are part of environmental footprint carbon footprint CO2 emissions, recycling, pollution, spillage, use of scarce resources like oil and trees, green, environmentally friendly products or environmentally friendly production processes or machineries. All these are the buzzwords we have to talk under environmental footprint. Okay. 
So let's do a quick question on social and environmental footprint. This is highlight hotels question number two A. <laughs> highlight hotels question number two A. So highlight hotels, we have already read the introduction. Let's look at 2A. Following a subsequent decision by the highlight board, the proposed acquisition of the Comfy Hotel has recently been announced to the D-Land stock market. And generally, the market has reacted positively to the announcement. However, there have been some negative press reports in D-Land Daily News about the proposed acquisition criticizing Highlight. The chief executive of Highlight is very concerned about these reports and has asked the business analyst team to consider Highlight's response. I don't know what, what is the negative report? What is the criticism? I don't know. Required, prepare a draft press release. Ooh. Responding to the criticisms. Responding to the criticism. Assessing the social and environmental effects, or sorry, impact of highlights proposed investment in Villandia with a view to reassuring its stakeholders of highlights intention to maintain its high principles and standards in acquiring comfy stay hotel 10 marks professional skills marks are available for demonstrating communication skills in clarifying and conveying relevant information to highlight stakeholders now how do we score communication skills there are two ways to score good marks on communication skill. Number one is the format. So whatever format is required, we give that format very nicely. For example, if a report is required, we give a proper report. If a presentation is required, we make a proper slide. In this case, a press release is required. So we draft a proper press release format. And the second thing important is, the language or the tone of your answer because you have to keep the reader in mind a press release will be released in the press this means it will be released in the newspaper and general public they read newspaper so our language our tone should be according to the way we are communicating to a general public so again, communication skills is not difficult. As long as you give the nice format and your language is appropriate to the reader, you will be able to gain communication skills. So the main thing is, I would like to know what are those criticisms? So you see the requirement, respond to the criticisms. So what are the criticisms? If someone can tell me the criticism, I will respond. Okay, for example, let me criticize you. Let me criticize Christopher. Hey, Chris, are you there? Chris, um, I don't like your shirt. I'm criticizing you. I don't like your shirt. Now, can anybody help? Can Chris respond to me? Ah, okay, he's saying, oh. You can say, okay. Uh, you can't say why. I mean, you can say, if the criticism is, I don't like your shirt, you can say, okay, if you don't like, I can change it. Or, okay, it's, it's you know, our choices differ. Uh, what I'm wearing, I'm liking. Okay, so responding is very simple. If I know the criticism, I would be able to respond. So what is the criticism which has been made in the press? <coughs> so, ah, exhibit four. 
exhibit four is the newspaper article following the recent announcement of highlight to acquire the comfy stay hotel chain in Vilandia. Yes, Aisha, you are right. So this is the this is a one to one exhibit It just tells about talks about the criticisms. If you read the name of the exhibit newspaper article following the recent announcement. Has highlight hit a low, so I'm trying to when while I will read, I will try and identify the negative points, the criticism which the media has done so that I can draft my responses. Highlight Hotels recently announced it was making an approach to buy the struggling Comfy Stay Hotel in Villandia. Right. Comfy Stay's owners, the Devault family, announced their intention to sell the business three months ago, having seen revenues decline steadily in the last three years. Okay. Its chief executive and founder Anders Devault admitted in an interview last month that the family has failed to recognize and keep up with the investment demands of a modern hotel, but was confident that a new owner could revitalize the business. But is its potential acquisition by highlight a positive move for the d -land waste budget hotel business? So I don't see any negative points so far. He's just asking a question. Reading its recently published chief executive statement, Highlight is a business which clearly prides itself on the value it places on its staff and maintaining strong employment rights. That's correct. However, Staff in comfy stay hotels are currently paid well below the rate of pay earned by their equivalent staff in D land. Mm. So that's his problem. What else? They also work longer hours per week with few employment rights. Most of comfy stays staff are women who are offered few opportunities for training or staff development. In addition, Comfy Stay's policy for of only employing men as hotel managers and senior staff in its hotels would seem to be in stark contrast to the strong focus on equality within Highlight's employment practice. I see. So, so these are some negative points with this stupid guy is raising. Okay. Just a minute, guys. Uh, I think the screen is hanging. Some of the students are. No, I think it's working. It's a bit lagging. It's a bit slow. Okay. These guys are fixing it. So, um, what are the key points? Low referencing, low pay, high number of hours, less training. What else? Gender, males, gender biasness, males only. Staff pay and conditions may not be the only concern for highlight. Comfy stay was fined by the government of Finlandia less than two years ago for polluting the local waterway in its main coastal tourist town with an outflow of untreated effluent. Okay. The cause was outdated waste and toilet facilities which it said would be addressed but limited recent investment in comfy stay hotel chains suggests otherwise highlight will have to invest significant sums of money to make the hotel chain viable and sustainable part of its business if it wishes to adhere to high expectations so what's the main point here uh, pollution environmental aspect 
Although Vilandia has a thriving tourist economy, which has in fact grown since the global economic recession, it is a country of limited environmental awareness. National recycling levels are 50% less than other countries in the region and its reported CO2 emissions are the worst in the region. Okay, I'm just highlighting it. Again, I would just write uh, in environmental, it's an environmental information. Okay, so why is Comfy Stay hotel chain of interest to highlight? Seemingly, foreign companies like Highlight wish to exploit this low-wage economy where a poorly educated population is happy to be in employment at whatever rate of pay and where profits can be maximized by exploiting locals and tourists alike. Okay. For an organization like Highlight, this must be a questionable and some may suggest an unethical direction of development. Oh my God. So this stupid uh, senior business reporter, AJ Telling, I hate him. You know, we have good intentions. And now this guy is just turning it around and he's just, you know, bringing up all the negative things. Abdullah is saying someone has paid the journalist to write such article. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. So now this the thing is now this article has been published in the newspaper and it is a reputational issue for us out of nowhere. And as the CEO, it is his job to respond to the public to make sure that people knows what are the facts and our reputation is not at stake, correct? So exactly that is the requirement of the question. If you read the question, prepare a draft press release responding to the criticisms, assessing the social and environmental impact of da, 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 da. So on a high level, I need to draft a press release and it should contain two portions. The first portion will talk about social uh, impact and the second portion will talk about environmental impact. Okay, you remember the topic social impact. It includes employees, customer suppliers and society and environmental. It includes recycling, CO2, pollution, all those stuff. Okay, so. The first thing, the format. The, the format of a press release. Okay, so as usual, we will say give us big heading in center called. Okay, this is the format of a press release. And we need to give a heading what this press release is all about. So think of a heading. I can I can read the requirements. Repair a release, draw press release, responding to the criticisms, assessing the social and environmental impact of highlights proposed investment in Vilandia. Okay. How about social and environmental impact of highlight? in Vilandia. That's kind of the heading of our article. And then we have to write from whom, who from the company is issuing the press release. So although I know that we have been asked to draft, but we cannot write from, from 
senior business analyst no we cannot write this although i know our role is senior business analyst but this is a press release and a press release is um, normally issued by the chief executive he is only authorized to issue a press release or by the chairman of the board okay so um i would rub this one and it should be from the chief executive okay so can somebody tell me the name of the chief executive <laughs> right don't worry it was mentioned in in um let me change my pen please uh, it was mentioned in first exhibit bernie walks you remember his picture the the smart salt and pepper guy bernie walks ceo highlight okay that's the professional way of drafting a press release you first give a small heading nayab ipad abdullah umro very good i'm impressed and you write the name just don't write ceo you will lose professional skills mark when you know the name of the ceo and this is a press release the name of the ceo has to go okay and then there will be an opening sentence uh, which has to be nicely drafted and uh, then we will talk about social considerations and environmental considerations okay so first of all we will say uh, if you if you recall um you know uh, i recall let me uh, i read all these nice things that it is you know we focus a lot on staffing and uh focus on staffing and focus on environment i read somewhere fun brand compare stuff this one highlight values is staff highly and is strongly committed to staff development and retention highlight pays above d land okay 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 we can use this information and uh, there was something about environment brand staff here as well digital ah you see this table do you see this do you see this some kpis i would like to use it and then there's this staffing para we are committed to create a great place to work da 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 it talks about equality diversity we spend so much money on staff development and annual skills and we implemented the new law 6 months in advance wow all these points we have to tell to the press that this you know this guy is bullshitting we are not like that we are an ethical employer and we will give all these facts and figures to the press also an environmental thing we will continue to build our reputation uh da 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 environment management systems so that should be our opening sentence that highlight really you know have always adopted and maintained high principles and standards with regards to social and environmental activities and then you know you give this opening two three lines and then you give the heading social impact and then you need to write two or three small paragraphs talking about what we have done okay all the good points we have done and where can you guy find all the good points i just showed you we can pick up good points from here exhibit 1 that we highlight is committed to creating a great workplace a strong commitment to equality and diversity uh, we have invested around 10 million annually in skills development programs and all these things 
right and do we have the financial projections of the fact sheet remember i saw something on the fact sheet do you see this so even in our in our projections at comfy hotel we have included training cost as one of the expense and how much are we spending 3 million plus 6 plus 3 9 10.5 million in total so i would like to mention that in the press that uh, for comfy hotel we have we are planning to spend 10.5 million dollars under training staff training and development over next 6 years okay Similarly, for uh, environmental thing, where can we find environmental information? Again, we go back to the CEO's statement. My referencing is helping me, you see. And we will pick up sentences from here that we focus, or uh, we will continue to focus uh, our focus and reputation for operating in a sustainable and environmentally friendly business. Uh, we are committed to con develop and invest in sustainability and environmental management systems to reduce our levels of wastages. Ah, oh my God. We should also try and give these statistics. We will say our staff retention uh, is 52% and we are spending 6.2 Two training days we are also committed to environment and try to use these statistics as well and this is how you will draft your answer so the main thing which I did why I selected this question was number one I wanted to show you the format of press release okay so it will have a heading it will have a press release and then it will have a heading it will have a from a opening paragraph and then you will come to the answers okay second thing is I wanted to discuss social and environmental aspects how we pick from the case just pick up the relevant information if you have done your referencing correctly this one if you've done your referencing correctly you will be able to know where to look for the information and try to use um, you know statistics as much as possible the KPIs the budgets the the amounts which we have used uh, in the in the fact sheet I can see the environmental investment as well one two three four six million dollars okay do you understand um, let me go through the comments video is slow video is getting stuck I think it's it's working fine now yeah, I can see that. So, so all we have to do is pick up negative points against us and try presenting them positively. And these positive points are all over the question. Muniba, absolutely right. The question says, respond to the criticism. I don't want to repeat the criticism in my press release. I will just try and pick up all the positive points and throw it on his face is it safe to quote budgeted figures in the press release good question um interesting from an exam point of view yes i don't care i just want to give some some numbers okay we also have to include environmental investment in our fact sheet if you can it would be nice sir these statistics are from d land we have to answer on criticism made on comfy and Villandia. correct sad we have not yet acquired comfy right all the bad things were not done by us it was done by the existing owners okay i i am yet to buy that company so all this has been done in Vilandia and by the previous owners. What I'm trying to prove here, and, and this 
a reporter is trying to you know show that it is us who is responsible for these so what i'm just trying to do is explain my principles and what i have done in dlan this shows my intent okay and i would say that we will continue with our values and principles once we acquire comfy hotel something on those lines okay sir is that um, is that they tell about comfy problems yeah now we tell about our current company good points yes that's all we can do right uh, we can just talk about us and what we have done so far sir you only talk related to staff and employees for social footprints what about customers and suppliers and society yes amisha but in the exhibit in the article there was no mention of customers and suppliers and society so for 10 marks i'm not going to expand my answer unnecessarily and we have to relate our good points with the bad facts no 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 we don't have the time and the marks to relate our good points with the bad facts in fact i don't want to in a, in a press release if i'm the ceo i would not repeat the bad things against me right why should i you understand so because it's low marks it's like 10 marks technical let me see how much marks how much marks was there uh, 10 plus 3 13 marks right so it's not that so six marks for social uh, seven marks for social six marks for environmental so i will not explain that customer satisfaction no yasin why why do we why do you need to why do you need to include customer satisfaction when there is nothing mentioned in the article you have to stick with the exhibits you, the requirement is to respond to the criticism there was no single word about customer so stay away from giving ideal answers please all right cool so i hope you uh, understood the press release and how we pick up answers from the exhibits and how we you know pick up statistics now let's move on i'm just trying to see okay this is practice question one where is the thing this one so we are done with uh, social footprint environmental footprint now pestle okay uh, very easy topic pestle The first thing is this pestle is used to analyze the country environment or the is it is also called the macro environment it is a model used for external environment and it focuses on country or macro level environment in political what are the keywords now you should remember the keywords how do you highlight political points political means the government factors okay so words like government government policies government subsidies government approvals and licenses taxes political stability all these are words relating to political how do you identify economy you will see the word economy in the question economic growth economic recession economic downturn these are the most common words grants yeah good points grants i grants are government grants is also a good word social you will see words like prosperous developed nation standard of living educated population unemployment these are all social technological you need to look for words like plant and machinery skilled workers yeah, or skilled laborers it or technology internet online roads infrastructure these are all words which fits under technology ecological the same thing we studied before co2 
carbon footprint, recycling, pollution, standard words. And for legal, you will see the words like laws and regulations and legislations and patents and trademarks and copyrights, all this. So if you remember these keywords, you will be easily able to identify pastel points while reading the case. The second important thing for pastel is you have to comment whether these factors are favorable or unfavorable. You see, this is very, very important. So for example, when we when you talk about political, this one, you need to conclude whether political environment is favorable or not. And then when you talk about economy, you will need to conclude whether the economy is favorable or not and so forth. Very, very important. If you don't mention favorable, unfavorable, you will not be able to score marks. Um, Ikra is saying inflation, interest taxes, interest rates are economy. Yes, correct. Overlapping points. Another important concept about Pestel is that their one point may fit into a couple of headings. For example, government recently introduced a new tax law i repeat government recently introduced a new tax law where can it go it can go under p because the government is trying to implement more regulations to you know streamline the economy and it can go under legal as well because it's a new thing so in in pastel it is perfectly fine if you repeat one point under cup more than one headings provided that your drafting your perspective is a little bit different okay so this i what i call these uh, is overlapping points so if this point can go under you know p or it can go under legal okay any questions on pastel Okay. Port of five forces. Now, port of five forces is another model which is used to analyze industry environment. So, pestle was for country, and port of five is used for industry environment. It is also called uh, industry is also called micro environment. Okay. So, port of five has got five forces bargaining power of customer bargaining power supplier threat of new entrance threat of competition threat of substitute so how do you identify bargaining power of customers what are the words you should look for wherever you see the word customers or consumers just highlight it that definitely will become part of bargaining power of customer okay and then under port of five forces you have to mention high or low in pestel you have to mention favorable unfavorable but in port of five forces you mention uh, you know high is it the bargaining power of customer is high or low very very important if you don't mention high or low you will not get any marks so how do you decide whether the bargaining power of customer is high or low. These are certain uh, factors, okay? Oops, sorry. These are certain factors which will help you decide whether the bargaining customer's power is high or low. Number one is the size of the customer. If your customer is large global company, then customer power will be high. Number two, do you have any uniqueness in your product? Any brand, any uniqueness? If no, then customer's power will be high. Is the customer willing to pay premium? If no, then customer power is high. If yes, then customer power is low. Do you understand? Do you understand bargaining power customer, uh, how to decide whether high or low? excellent bargaining power of supplier now this supplier basically it means our supplier of our 
raw materials okay when we talk about customers we talk about finished goods the things we sell to finish the finished goods which we sell to customers and when we talk about suppliers we talk about our purchases of raw materials how do you identify you look for words like suppliers you look for words like vendors or manufacturers whenever you see these words in the case study it means you need to highlight them and it will be covered under power of supplier how to decide whether supplier power is high or low again the same points the size of the supplier is there any switching cost switching cost means whether we are able to switch supplier easily or not whether there is any penalty or not if we are able to if we are not able to switch suppliers easily that means supplier power is high and our power is low are we willing to pay any premium okay threat of new entrants so we have to look for barriers to entry now this concept is very important we look for um, we look for barriers to entry if the barrier is high threat of new entrant will be low they work in opposite direction if the barrier to entries is high then the threat of new entrant is low but if the barrier to entry is low then threat will be high okay so we look for barriers to entry and then we do uh, what are the examples of barriers to entry words like patents government approvals government licenses all these are classic examples of barriers to entry so in case if we have taken some patents that means there is a strong barrier to entry which in turn means that the threat of new entrant is low okay yes aisha i agree with that very very important this sentence um, right threat of competition we have to mention what are the words for competition competition rivalry market share is a very examiner's favorite word number of competitors if our market share is very low if there are many number of competitors that means the threat of competition is high yes anthony i agree with that threat of substitute again what are the keywords alternates or alternatives this is the word which examiner always uses okay so are we done with pastel and porter five forces now there's something called strategic position analysis couple of times the examiner has done as asked analyze the strategic position of abc company so whenever you see this kind of a question analyze the strategic position then you have to cover external factors as well as internal factors and under external factors you have to cover country environment using pastel and then you have to cover porter industry environment using porter five forces and then under internal factors do you remember these four items the standard list human resource financial resource it and brand so whenever you receive a question which says analyze the strategic position of abc company keep this in mind you need to uh, uh, analyze uh, macro environment using pastel and then you need to analyze micro environment using porter five forces and then you need to analyze internal factors in which you will talk about the standard four things all right any question on strategic position right so let's try and do a question on pestle 
and I don't think we will have time to do Porter 5 forces. I, I would suggest that we do Pestel now and you guys try and do Porter 5 forces this question on your own uh, at your home as homework and then um, you we will um, discuss this if, if required okay so now our exam question practice number three topic is pestle sbl march june 2019 smart wear clothing question number one let me exam practice number three Okay, that's the paper. Company's name is Smartware, so no more highlight company. So there's a background, and then the exhibits, and then the question. Okay, so let's read. Smartware is a long established clothing retailer in Noria, a highly developed northern European country, which is currently in the middle of deep economic crisis. Wow, too much information. Okay. And the country is also experiencing political uncertainty. Whoa because of its co coalition government who many influential commentators believe will not last for its full term of office these two factors have contributed to a record high levels of unemployment low business confidence and a steady decline in the standard of living of the general population the company also operates in two other countries on the european continent Southland and Centrum. Whoa. So let's do my referencing. Uh, developed country. Okay. Economy is down. Uh, political uncertainty. Uh, high unemployment. And what else is the key message? decline standard of living that's it so these are the informations which i picked up from this paragraph move on right now i don't need know the requirements as usual introduction i just tend to identify anything which i feel is important smartware has enjoyed long-term business success mainly due to the fact that it has carefully positioned itself towards the lower end of clothing retail sector. Okay. It sources its products directly from suppliers in low cost economies, and it has been able to target a mass market with consistently low prices. This has meant that during the recent economic downturn in Noria, it has been able to profit from the growing number of price sensitive customers who have switched from more high end of the clothing retail market to budget retailers like Smartware, who are the market leader in this high volume market. Whoa. So what are the key messages coming from this? Carefully position uh, pricing. I, again, we are going for a low pricing model. Low pricing. And uh, low cost countries. Uh, we are purchasing from low cost countries and um, market leader 
what else smart wares long term strategy has always been based on low cost very good low price business model low cost low price business model which is described through its mission statement and strategic goals however following a prolonged period of expansion and growth including successfully penetrating several other european markets the company is for the first time experiencing a marked downturn in both its operational and financial performance oh my god first time why um i don't know this appears to be in part due to economic pressure okay and the growing intensity of competition in all of its markets both at home mm. so what is the key messages from this one low price model and uh, marked downturn in both operational and financial performance financial is down economic pressure and high competition okay at a recent board meeting to discuss the latest set of disappointing financial results it was proposed that an external consultant be appointed to investigate the deteriorating performance of smartware and propose the best way forward to the company you are the external consultant engaged by smartware and you have gathered the following information exhibit 1 is a briefing notes prepared by the business development department for the consultant exhibit 2 is a transcript of a recent smartware board meeting i think this may be a uh, multiple exhibit an article from noria herald dated 21st i don't know whether this is single one to one or multiple comparative macro economic data for noria southland and centrium i think it may be one to one executive summary of smartware internal audit report on supply chain management this sounds like one to one customer database management systems financial investment approval this sounds like one to one so i think this this one is one one to one i'm not sure i'm just guessing one to one um rest i don't know we'll see okay required it is apparent that the downturn in smartware's performance um just hang on guys uh okay sorry it is apparent that the downturn in smartware's performance can be in part attributed to external factors beyond the company's direct control okay a recent national newspaper article further confirms that the economic situation in noria has made trading conditions tough for the business very good therefore a good understanding of those external environmental factors negatively affecting the smartware business model is essential so that actions can be taken to remedy the current situation and improve the future prospects for the company and its investors okay the board of smartware wants to fully understand how the general environment is in affecting on the company as this will directly influence its ability to enable the business to succeed and prosper the board has asked you to brief the board on this issue for the next board meeting required prepare a briefing paper to be presented at the next board meeting which analyzes the environment in which smartware operates and consider how this might impact its business model mission and strategic goals
10 marks. B. Assess the major risks which we have not done this topic so far and professional skills are available for evaluation skills by assessing the identified risks at smartware. So this professional marks directly pertains to part B because it says uh, assessing the identified risks and the risk was here. So there is no professional marks for part A. Okay, so we just need to focus on these 10 marks, technical marks. So analyze the environment in which smartware operates and consider how this might impact the business model. 10 marks. So when, when, whenever we are asked to analyze the environment, there are two environment and micro environment okay macro environment means the country environment and micro environment means industry environment for macro we use pestle and for micro we use auto five forces remember now we need to decide here are we supposed to apply both pestle as well as auto five forces Considering the marks, I have my doubts because if I apply pastel as well as Porter five forces, it will become a lengthy answer and 10 marks means not a lot. So and secondly, considering the information available. OK. Um, most of the information pertains to country or the you can say the macro environment. And lastly, this word, the general environment. The word general environment means macro or country. Okay, remember this. See how cunning the examiner is. He has not mentioned this in the requirement. He has mentioned the word general environment in 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 the question not under the requirements okay so many students what they did the mistake they did was uh, they some of them they applied pastel as well as porter 5 forces and they struggled because there was limited information on porter 5 and because of all these things they overrun the time and this is question number 1a so they overrun that overrun the time on the first questions OK. Many students, they applied Porter Diamond as well, which is also acceptable. Porter Diamond is also a model which helps us analyze uh, the external environment. So those of you who think of Porter Diamond are also correct. However, personally, I feel that. I, I agree with the way Laiba is thinking. Um, hang on, there is some problem. Hello. Hi guys, can you hear me now? If yes, can you if you if you can hear me type yes, please. Oh, perfect. Perfect. All right. Right, so we need to apply pastel. OK, now what's the format here? Briefing paper. Now do you know the format? We will say. Uh, hang on.
And now I expect you to know the pay format. You will give the heading. Is it briefing notes or briefing paper? It's a briefing paper. So let's stick to the wording the examiner has used. So the two from oh the briefing paper we don't write two what do we write do you remember what do we write for attention of from subject date okay so for attention of this is to be addressed to uh, the board of directors, right? What's our role? We are external consultants, remember? Subject. Look at the requirement. I will just pick up the subject. Analyze the environment in which smartware operates and consider and uh, and date you will put the date of the exam you will draw a line close it out now i need a small opening sentence but without the heading of introduction this briefing paper Paper does what? I will just pick up from the requirements. Analyzes the environment in which smartware operates and consider how this might impact its business model, strategic mission, and strategic goals. Can you draft that? I don't want to waste my time in drafting now since that you are familiar with the format. This briefing paper analyzes the environment in which da 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 you just draft from the requirement now where can i find information we need to talk about pastel porter uh, sorry pastel like political economic social technological eco eco and legal so the, how many marks is this 10 marks for 10 marks how much points Okay, five points. I'm happy with four. I'm happy with six, but let's try to stick with five if we are able to find five points. Otherwise, four points are okay, also done. But I think I, oh, there's an exhibit one which we never read. And then there's an exhibit three. Oh, let's quickly go through exhibit one. Uh, maybe uh, just let me quickly go through the achieve the mission governance arrangement. So the exhibit one is the briefing notes prepared by business development department for the consultant. It talks about our mission statement. It talks about governance arrangements and then business development. So no listed in the Nokia stock exchange five years ago. Okay. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, what about exhibit three no an article from the Noria Herald more doom and gloom okay this looks more relevant having already suffered for more than three years of economic misery oh there is still no end in sight for the poor people of Noria. A recent report issued by the finance ministry has forecasted negative economic growth, which in reality means further decline for Noria during the whole of this year and possibly beyond. Oh my gosh, future is also negative growth. Price inflation has been running at 
nearly 7% over a year, which is high. But with a stagnant economy, the central bank will be reluctant to raise interest rates. So with more than 8% of the adult population currently unemployed, whoa, and an austerity program imposed by the government because of reduced taxation revenue, the prospect in Noria still looks pretty bad. Oh my God, let's make the referencing economy down. We know that negative economic growth and inflation high. Um, unemployment high and government austerity program. The big question must be are there any signs of economic recovery which a reporter from the noria asked the finance minister at a press briefing yesterday to which his reply was so if we are able to successfully survive 2019 period without any more important business going into liquidation or further heavy job losses then it seems that an economic recovery may start as early as possible that is our expectation, but we have to wait and see. So these are the information we have collected. So for Pestel, the heading would be political environment. Okay, what have, do you find points about government? For government, let me. Did we see Mark anything about government? We talked about developing country economy, political uncertainty here. Oh, I saw something like political uncertainty. This one. Uh, the country is experiencing the political uncertainty because of its coalition government, which believe will not last for its full term we got political okay what else unemployment standard of living da, 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 and then i remember something about government austerity measures this one so this all looks like the political factors are favorable or unfavorable It's unfavorable, right? And if the if the political environment is unfavorable, what impact does it does it have on our mission, business model, or our performance? We will be not we will not be able to take long term decisions. We will not be able to do long term investments if we are uncertain about government continuity and government policies. Okay, very good economy the next thing is economy it's more than three years of economic misery uh, economic recovery may start but we have to wait and watch this is as per the finance minister also there was points here on economy uh, this one sorry i didn't mark this economy lots of points on economy i think also in um, in the introduction in this one uh, it's currently in the middle of deep economic crisis. So again, econ economy is um, unfavorable. And because of that, what impact does it have? Uh, it will have a adverse impact on our financial performance, on our revenues, costs, and profitability, right? Social, it talks about unemployment, standard of living. There was some statistics about unemployment. 8% I think you just pick all those and put it under social technology I was not able to find but uh, Obaidur Rahman is saying that in the exhibit last para exhibit one last para there was something about technology yeah I think I saw somewhere um, 
yeah, uh, there is some availability of technology, e-retailers. Hmm. So technology is favorable because uh, you know there, there there's an e-commerce opportunity. There are e-retailers, so technology is favorable. Good point. Uh, ecological, I didn't see anything about ecological. Uh, maybe because they are not manufacturing themselves, uh, they are having stuff manufactured from low-cost countries, so ecological aspects may not be directly important for them. And lastly, legal, again, not a lot of information on legal. So for 10 marks, I think we did a lot. We talked about political. We talked about economy in detail, referencing with exhibits. We talked about social aspects. Ah, there was something about inflation as well, right? So we just compile all these points. So if you guys do your referencing, like all this referencing, you know, these all these, uh, hang on. Uh, 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 uh. So these are the referencing this technique will really make your life easy this is what i'm trying to prove again and again okay right so uh, here we need to now end because i am mindful that there's a overrun on the timing we started 10 minutes late so i'm trying to cover up so i hope that today you are able to learn pestel a uh, social environmental footprint press release and more importantly you learn time management techniques okay so uh, just to show uh, just people who are asking uh, my whatsapp number mm, let me okay here's my whatsapp number okay Just WhatsApp to me and I will send the link. Let me go to the questions. We just have to mention favorable and unfavorable and their impacts. We don't have to write the points in our words related to subheadings. Amisha, no. For 10 marks, just pick up the factor, comment favorable, unfavorable, and one line impact. You need to decide what you have to write based on the number of marks, Amisha. So if you if you write more than that, you, you will overrun the time what's the main difference between briefing paper and briefing notes no difference it's exactly the same just the name is different so we just use the word used a by the examiner sir please when will yesterday's recording yesterday's recording is already available on vimeo if you are on my whatsapp group i i have just shared it yesterday Right, so ladies and gentlemen, we will end the session now. I hope it was helpful to you. Tomorrow we will do something important. Um, you have to do Porter five forces on your own. Try to attempt the question. And tomorrow we will start with integrated reporting. And tomorrow from exam techniques point of view, I will tell you the list of important models and how to present your answer, how to draft your answer, some do's and don'ts, okay? So I will see you guys tomorrow, 8 p.m. Pakistan time. Have a good night and see you tomorrow.